news. Now, let's remain in Meru, where Maringa earlier engaged Governor Kiraitu Murungi on several issues in the county. Maringa, good morning. Over to you. Welcome. My guest this week uh, is a man who wears several hats. He is a Harvard University graduate, an accomplished lawyer, a seasoned politician uh, who was member of parliament for South Imenti for 21 years. He was also at that time a cabinet minister who, served, who held two positions uh, in Moi Kibaki's government. He later became the first senator of Meru County and is now the governor of the same county, county number 12. Honorable Great Mungi, thank you for joining us on KTN News in an on, on exclusive interview since uh, he was elected governor. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we uh, promulgated this new constitution in 2010 and uh, you had been in the struggle for democracy and constitutional review uh, from the moment from the times you were in the young tax uh, revolution uh, nine years later is devolution working for Kenya mm -hmm. uh, okay thank you very much uh, and for inviting me for the interview mm -hmm. I really appreciate it mm -hmm. uh, I think we have not experienced the new constitution since 2010. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced it personally, mm -hmm. both as a member of the Senate mm -hmm. and also now as a governor. Yes. And I can say from my own experience mm -hmm. and interacting with the people, mm -hmm. not only in Meru but mm -hmm. elsewhere, mm -hmm. that uh, the revolution is a, is a revolution. Uh, it has really transformed our grassroots. And there's some, something happening in every village uh, that you visit. Uh, you know, ECD grass here, a road, water project, things which were not happening before. And um, I think if there is uh, any real uh, benefit that the people of Kenya got from the new constitution, is devolution. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. And uh, yeah. you know, nine years later, uh, we, there have been many calls for mm. the constitutional review. Mm. Uh, we have had the Bibia, we have had the Kuguza Mzigo, and other governors mm. have come up with the Ugatuzi initiative. Mm. Uh, how different is this, and will it be the solution for Kenya? The yeah, Ugatuzi initiative is, a, is an initiative of the Council of Governors to reform the constitution, to strengthen the evolution. Uh, Professor Kibwana and I have been requested by our colleagues in the Council of Governors to lead uh, that initiative. Our main focus in Ugatuzi is uh, to see whether we can strengthen the evolution by transferring more resources you know, to the counties. Um, and secondly, to simplify the process of transferring those resources you know, to the counties. And we are proposing at least 45% of the national revenue is transferred to the counties in the state of the current 15%. And we are also proposing that instead of all these administrative barriers and obstacles we are facing from Treasury in the transfer of funds, a smoother way be written in the constitution for transferring those resources. Uh, for instance, um, all these various approvals that we are getting like from the control of budget. We have offices of the control of budget in the counties and there's a control of budget at the national level. Instead of having two approvals, why do, don't we just get one? The one in the county or the one in the national so that we can simplify the process. Uh, secondary, uh, no money can be transferred into our accounts so long as there's any money in the account. So even if I have 20 million left in my account, maybe for a bill which will not pay last month, no, no new money can be put in that account. And we're saying funds should be transferred into the account accounts, whether there's any balances there or not, because it is our entitlement you know, to, to that money. So basically, we're asking for more financial autonomy you know, for, for the counties. Um, we, we have been talking about agriculture being the backbone of the Kenya's economy. Everybody says that. But when it comes to allocation of resources, agriculture is ignored, it's marginalized in budgetary allocations, both at the national and the county levels. 
you look at the amount of money put in security, the amount of money put in roads and infrastructure, and you compare with what is taken to agriculture, you find that agriculture gets only 3.7% of the total budget, or alas, and getting 20 or 30%. So, we, in the Watu's initiative, we have said, let all the development money come into counties. 10% of that money should be ring fenced and invested in agriculture, livestock, and fisheries. Uh, you know, so that we do not ignore this critical uh, sector. We have also said we refence money for youth. 5% of the money coming to counties go to support uh, youth and women programs, so that again, we, we tackle the deficiencies that we find you know, in these sectors. So really the Uwadu's initiative is not only seeking to increase resources to the counties, but also it is looking at how those resources get distributed when they come to the counties. We are also creating a ward development a fund in every ward, and allocating that a percent of the development money is coming to the counties so that there is equitable distribution you know, of the monies in the, in the wards. Uh, so we think it's a good initiative which we should all support. But we are not just selfishly looking at the counties. The counties cannot exist without a national uh, framework. So we are also looking at the structure of the national government. And uh, in our case, we have looked at countries where the evolution is doing well. In Japan, or in Germany, even South Africa. And in, we have said in those, in those uh, counties, the executive is also a bit spread. So we have recommended that we have uh, both a president and a prime minister. The prime minister who appears in the parliament, the prime minister who comes to defend government on the floor of the assembly, so that he can be asked to account, so that when things go wrong in the counties, we have somebody who can go and quickly respond. Uh, we have also recommended that ministers come from uh, sitting members of parliament, and the, and the counties, they come from uh, sitting members of the county assemblies. Again, because these are more in touch with the people. You can have a government which is cut off and suspended, uh, you know, floating over the heads of the people. We want a government which is more linked, uh, you know, with the, with the people, a government which uh, listens to the heartbeat, the aspirations, and, uh, you know, hopes and frustrations of the people. Yeah, so this is the kind of structure that we are recommending in the Uwatu's initiative. Uh, we do know that uh, the other initiatives, the Punguza Mizigo has been very exciting to the people. But the uh, Punguza Mizigo is only exciting in its title. Uh, it's a fairly abstract academic document uh, which has very, very many unrealistic proposals. Uh, for instance, how do you abolish constituencies? Uh, people are used to representation. You know, how, how do you go to re reduce the, the representation by women, you know, in the parliament now? Uh, we think it has not been properly thought out. The, the Mizigos are really not more in the legislative arm of government, they're in the executive. Like, there's a lot of duplication and confusion brought about even in devolution by parastatos. Like now we have AFA, which deals with all crops uh, in Nairobi, and agriculture has been devolved. All those resources with AFA should be brought to the counties, and then you abolish that line of bureaucracy. So if you look at the parastatos and uh, rearrange the them and they transfer those functions to the counties, you can reduce more Mizigo than any Mizigo or court things you can uh, reduce by reducing the number the members of parliament. So it is, it is not looking at the real problem. The real problem of Mizigo is in the executive. It is not in the, in the registration. Um, yes. There has been a discussion that um, 
the both houses of parliament, the Senate and uh, the National Assembly, uh, none is superior than the other. But in the Ugatuzi initiative, um, the role the Senate, uh, you, you propose that the Senate should be made the upper house in the bicameral system of parliament, whereas the National Assembly should be the lower house. Uh, what will that seek to address? Actually, the Senate is supposed to be a house of review. It's supposed to be a superior house where matters which are now discussed uh, in, the, in the Congress or National Assembly are again looked at by another house. And that happens around all over. They, they, it's just like having a high court and a court of appeal. So in our case, we create the Senate, but because it is the parliament, it is the members of parliament who are creating it, they, they made it a house which is lower than their own house. Many you know, of the functions being performed by parliament in Kenya and by the National Assembly in Kenya are not performed by parliament elsewhere. Like this confirmation of uh, vetting and confirmation of officials. This is uh, done by the Senate in the US, mm -hmm. even in places like Nigeria. It's only in Kenya where you have the National Assembly doing such things. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the dendrocks, the paralysis that we see mm -hmm. in the two houses should not be there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what Ugatuz is providing is that let all the bureaus emanate from uh, either the Senate mm -hmm. or the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, but the President should not assent to any bill which has not been passed by the Senate. This will avoid all the conflicts that we're having. Because, say like the Division of Revenue Bill, if it has been passed by the National Assembly, and then the Senate has also passed it, then the President can, uh, can assent. But now the President assents immediately it is passed by the National Assembly. So the Senate becomes just a debating club. It, it is it's, it's a useless body, <laughs> right? So those are the things we are trying to correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, and uh, talking yeah. of uh, signing the Division of Revenue Bill, the President uh, signed it into law, and uh, he asked counties to make clearance of pending bills a priority. Uh, what's your take on that, Governor? Well, you know the first time we are being told to clear pending bills. Mm -hmm. In Meru County, uh, Pending bills were two billion uh, Kenya shillings, inherited over the years, you know, since 2014. Now, even if you tell me tomorrow to clear those bills, and you don't give me the funds, how do I clear them? And I have salaries to pay, I have drugs to buy. So, we as governors are put in a, a very awkward position by such statements. I, I, I think. The National Treasury has done several audits of the paying bills, and they know how much is, is owed. Mm. I think the best thing is to set aside funds in the budget for clearing of the paying bills. Mm. Otherwise, it might not be cleared. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I, I saw the, earlier this year, the Middle County government initiated the committee that looked into the bills, the pending bills, but uh, there are still those contractors who complain that they haven't been paid, and you, you, you are vocal in saying that those who delivered services are, are the ones who will be paid. But the question came about Governor because they were saying, how then do you measure or separate who was able to deliver and who was not able to deliver? No, no, it is. <laughs> when we came in, in 2017, there are a lot of fake uh, claims. So we, we formed what we are calling a Petting Views Verification Committee. And we asked them to check, and we advertised. We said, everybody who had a claim against the government, please come and prove your claim. Bring the, the tender documents so that they were properly approved. And then our committee was to go and check whether the work was done. Mm -hmm. We were able to knock off almost 900 million worth of claims, and some don't even show up. Now, the ones which were verified, we have been trying to clear them slowly, 
in accordance with the availability of funds. And I think we have cleared quite a bit. Uh, now, the others who could not prove, we told them, please go to court. Uh, if you, we, you can come with a court order, then we are going to pay. Mm. So very few have come. Uh, but it is, then after that, Treasury said they wanted to verify. We gave them our report. They also brought on the Tazir and they checked. And then I think the, the only variance which we, we had with Treasury was regarding hotels, mm -hmm. where the Treasury said, um, you, you know, we are not properly looked at. Mm -hmm. And we, we resolved that. Mm -hmm. I think it was agreed that we increase what you are to pay from 1.3 to 1.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Governor, now at a few weeks ago, um, you said that uh, you feel like a stranger or a gate crusher in mm -hmm. the Jubilee Party mm -hmm. uh, due to the wrangles that have been witnessed. And uh, you challenged the Deputy President and the President to call together this party that you are a member of and you were elected uh, upon. Um, what, what, what is the solution to what is happening to the Jubilee Party? Now, I, I don't want to be really wade into that right now. Uh, but I, as you know, I played a key role uh, in, in, in the formation of the Jubilee Party. Uh, I myself and my own party was a party leader for the Bas Party, and uh, many others and their own parties. And we, we were invited by the president and the deputy president with a very good idea that instead of having all these small regional ethnic parties, why don't we collapse them into one big party uh, for bringing Kenya together so that we are one people, uh, you know, in one party, and whose focus would be unity, peace, and prosperity for our country. So we all agreed that indeed that was the way to go. And he, he, he saw the excitement which was there when we were launching the Jubilee Party. Uh, but unfortunately, the process of completing the, of completing the formation of the party mm -hmm. came very close to the elections. So the only officials who were elected through the Jubilee Party were the president himself as the party leader and the deputy president as the deputy party leader. Yes. And it was agreed that after the elections, then now we, the, the process will be completed because the party has structures, mm -hmm. even in the counties. Mm -hmm. um, but after the elections, we didn't go back to the party. And uh, the remaining stages of completion, the formation of the party, mm -hmm. were not done. Mm -hmm. And the party has not met uh, you know, since that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, who are very passionate about the party, mm -hmm. uh, you know, feel something should be done about it. Mm -hmm. Like now we are talking about constitutional reform. Mm -hmm. Jubilee should meet and take a position mm -hmm. on a constitutional reform instead of individuals, you know, just giving their own uh, separate views. Yes. Yeah, the party itself should sit down and say this is the direction mm -hmm. they want us to go. Mm -hmm. You know, we are talking about these frustrations we have in devolution. We should sit down as a party and say, indeed, this is how we strengthen devolution or not. But we feel that, um, you know, that political uh, direction is not coming. UBD is not performing the way it should. And uh, that's why we feel frustrated as, uh, as members. And that was what we were telling our leaders that uh, okay, we came with very good intentions, mm -hmm. we built this house together, mm -hmm. and uh, now if it's not working, then we should be told, mm -hmm. so that we can go wherever we came from. Yes. But here that would be unfortunate, uh -huh. you know, killing such a big dream. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to still appeal to our leaders mm -hmm. uh, to bring us together again, mm -hmm. Let's not destroy this house which we have built. Mm -hmm. And whatever challenges they have, mm -hmm. as a family, mm -hmm. we can sit and uh, try to resolve them okay. within the Jubilee family. Right. You can see what is happening in Kibera. Mm -hmm. 
Jubilee uh, on both sides, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so that should not be happening in any serious political party. Uh -huh. Yes, right. Yeah. And Governor, you came in 2017 as the second governor of this county, and you had some visions and dreams. Uh, your tagline or your motto is making Meru great. We know about the handed boreholes by, uh, but there has been the cash crunch and the incomplete projects, especially by the national government, which are, uh, in as much as you complement them, with, as in, as, in as much as you complement with your projects, the national government has also had incomplete projects. You see, there are hundred and there are over a hundred in number. Uh, what do you feel is, is is the right position, or what needs to be done? Uh, now, as you know, we work closely with the national government. Yes. Indeed, when we came to power this time, uh, we seen that has changed the, the style because the previous county governments had been at war with the national government. And we said, because the constitution does allow for cooperation and collaboration between the national and county governments, let's, uh, let's pursue the path of cooperation with the national government. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, even now we are doing so. Mm -hmm. uh, on our part, we, on my part, I said I'll make Meru great, but with the support of the, the national government. Mm -hmm. At the county, I think we are doing quite well. Given the little resources we have, you have seen we are making tremendous impact in water. We are doing roads and um, you know, all the things in our docket. Uh, but I really cannot say the same of the national government. Uh, we, we, in fact, they had procured contractors to do very many roads in Meru. But uh, many of those contractors are no longer on the sites, and uh, many of the projects have stalled. So we have been, been appealing to the national government also to complete their, you know, their projects. And we were very happy when Matiang was appointed and made in charge of uh, uh, following up on the completion of these projects. We made our list of 130 and completed the projects. And we have handed it over to, to Minister Matiang. Our members of parliament want to, to see him. They have promised to do something about it. They were waiting for this budget. So we are waiting for them in Meru to come and tell us. We understand they have uh, budgetary constraints, but at least they should tell us this year we are going to finish, you know, three, four, five, the next year, because we still have another three years left. So we are still engaged with them to see how we can. But it is uh, very embarrassing that not even one project has been completed all these years. Even in Kenoru Stadium, you know, which would have been completed last year. Uh, they say it's now 90% complete. There have been 90% complete for one year. Surely they can even finish that one. You know, so that, it's, I don't think it's a lot. It's bridge at Kadita. We, we agreed and do the road, then the national government does the bridge. I did the road, but the bridge was not done. Okay. I've been talking to Kera, the Kenya Roads Board, uh, Kura, mm -hmm. but nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. So th that's why we are complaining. Mm -hmm. We are saying, you know, we, you know, Kenya is like a cooperative society. Mm -hmm. We are all members. We own shares in that society. Mm -hmm. So if dividends are being paid, even we, uh, the shareholders from Meru County should get our own dividend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Right. And as you end up, Governor, let's talk about uh, Vision 2040 and mm -hmm. your dream for Meru County, uh, one of which includes uh, ensuring that Meru is food efficient, yeah. uh, there is no water shortage. And recently, just last week, uh, you launched, uh, or rather, you, you were in the uh, implementation committee, or you uh, sensitized the Nigerian checker to adopt the gender and sexual and gender-based violence policy that Meru County uh, initiated or came up with. Uh, what, moving forward, what, what would you like to see for Meru County? Actually, 
We have uh, big dreams uh, for this county. We are very lucky. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for development and transformation of Meru County. And uh, the Meru Economic and Social Council has been a very useful forum. Uh, as you know, it contains all the, the, the brightest, having greatest daughters and sons of Meru, led by Ambassador Francis Mulaura. They are the ones who are developing the vision 2040 uh, for Meru. Uh, but then they are long vision 2030. And we are trying to identify some flagship projects which can be done for this county. Um, now one of the things that uh, we are doing right now, Mount Kenya has been here. It's 40% of Mount Kenya is in Meru. But the Meru people just look at it. We don't get any economic benefits you know, from it. So we've been thinking about ways of uh, promoting mountain tourism, bring more visitors uh, to Meru because of the mountain. You have seen we have opened the road to Likelis, which is now about 13,000 feet. And you have seen people have started going there. Um, February next year, we are hosting an international uh, mountain running championship, uh, you know, from Kenya School of Adventure. And we're going to bring runners from all over the world, you know, to come to Meru. Uh, so these are things that, uh, you know, we are thinking about. In the future, we have visited the Switzerland, other mountain areas, even in China, like Yaro Mountains. We want to see cable cars taking people up and down in you know, Mount Kenya. Uh, we have a Meru National Park, which in area is as large as Masai Mara. But we don't have tourists. In fact, we are telling people come to Meru uh, National Park. In Masai Mara, tourists go to see other tourists because there are too many. You want to see the big five in natural habitat, uh, Virgin Africa, come to Meru, to Meru County. Uh, we are doing uh, a five-star hotel as the Meru County to increase the bed space in in uh, in Meru. Um, okay, roads are being done. They, we are doing a conference center in Meru, but I think the focus is our people. I've been trapped in this thinking that development is uh, water pipes, is, is uh, tarmac roads, and all that. But actually, the real development, the development of the people themselves, intellectual development of the people, is the greatest development a people can have. So we are trying to, to shift and put more resources into social development, uh, into education, including uh, not theoretical education for certificates. But, you know, how does the farmer get educated to produce more, you know, where he is? That's why we have opened this big training center at Kaguru. We have put a facility where we can train a thousand people at Ango you know, for that kind of transformation. Uh, secondly, we have still big challenges, especially with the youth. Youth poverty, youth apathy, unemployment is the biggest problem. In fact, it's a disaster for, for the entire country, Meru included. We want to put more resources in that area to see whether we can transform the future of our youth. And we have started in a small way with the Meru Youth Service. We are the first county to introduce a county youth service. But uh, our youth service is different from the national service because it is also intended to do a mental transformation of our youth. The days of seeking employment and disappearing. We want to know whether we can retrain, reschool our youth so that they can be able to identify opportunities within the realities you know where they are, and be able to survive, whether you're employed by somebody or not. 
So this is where we are, we are trying to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, quickly, Governor, come yeah. 2022, will yeah. you still be at the helm and buy again yeah. to lead this county? No, 2022 is a bit far. <laughs> uh, I, have, I was given a mandate for five years. Right. I want to see what best I can do for five years for the people of Meru. Yes. And then when 2022 comes, we'll be there. Let the people decide whether Kirai Tumurungi should continue or whether they should go home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Governor, right. for your time. Okay, Santi, Santi. Santi, Santi.